The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson is filled with massive crustaceans known as great shells. The most dangerous of these gargantuan creatures are the chasm fiends, which are so deadly that they can wreak havoc on dozens of soldiers in a matter of minutes. In this video, we'll dive into these vicious creatures' anatomy, explore their life cycle and habitat, and learn about the epic hunts that are organized to take these monsters down. Appearance and Anatomy Chasm fiends are the largest land-dwelling creatures on Roshar and are regarded as both majestic and terrifying. They tower over humans, growing upwards of 30 feet tall and over three times that in length. Their massive bodies are long, narrow, and sinuous, and they're covered with a protective armor made of interlocking carapace the color of dark violet ink. Smooth in some places, but forming wicked horn-like points in others, this carapace is so hard and tough that it leaves scores in stone as these creatures walk and repels volleys of arrows with ease. Chasm fiends have twisted, arrowhead-like faces situated at the end of long, powerful necks. They have large, glassy green eyes, ear holes further back, and nostrils at the end of their brutish maw. Below these features are their fearsome jaws filled with a variety of teeth some jagged and sword-like for ripping, others flat and plate-like for crushing. Inside their main set of jaws is a smaller circular mouth rimmed with more teeth and small mandibles for shoving food deeper into their throats. They have no tongues. On either side of their main jaws are small dexterous claws. They can use these small claws to manipulate food and other objects in front of their face. Behind their necks, chasm fiends have four powerful fore claws extending downward from their broad shoulders, with two scythe-like claws on the ends of each. These fore claws are used mostly for attacking and defending, striking at prey or enemies in rapid succession. For moving around, chasm fiends have 14 smaller legs set further back on their bodies, and they can use these to move bafflingly fast despite their extraordinary size. At the very back of their long body is a flattened tail that's forked on the end. I want to give a shout out to Cosmere and Miniature on YouTube for providing the footage of this Chasm Fiend miniature. He made a really cool tutorial video detailing the whole painting process. I'll link it in the description below. Chasm Fiends have violet blood that smells like wet mold, and when they're angry or excited, they let out a deep bellow that sounds like four overlapping trumpets playing in unison. This trumping is described as awful sounding and it's deafeningly loud. You may have wondered how a creature as colossal as a chasm fiend can exist without being crushed beneath its own weight. There are three factors that allow them to grow so large. The first is that Roshar has lower gravity and an atmosphere with higher oxygen than most planets in the Cosmere. This combination allows for people and creatures on Roshar to grow larger than they would on another planet, but this alone still shouldn't allow something chasm fiend sized to exist. Lucky for them, in addition to normal organs like a heart and lungs, they also have a gem heart made out of emerald. This gem heart is around the size of a human head and it gets invested with stormlight during high storms. That stormlight helps power their hulking bodies. The third and most important factor that allows them to be so humongous is that they form a Nile bond with Spren. These Spren are commonly known as Lux Spren, but the proper name for them is Mandra. They look like small glowing arrows that dance around chasm fiends, occasionally drifting away and vanishing like a plume of smoke. This Spren bond allows chasm fiends and other great shells to kind of fly in a mathematical sense and grow much larger than would otherwise be possible. Chasm fiends are surprisingly intelligent creatures. They aren't sapient, but they are smarter than most other creatures on Roshar, basically on the same level as the Rashadium horses. This is also thanks to the Spren bond. There is one strange instance at the end of Rhythm of War where we learn that a chasm fiend has been helping guide a group of listeners through the chasms to safety. This specific chasm fiend seems to be even more intelligent and less aggressive than average. I don't really know what to make of this strange chasm fiend, but I've seen theories ranging from it having bonded a special spren that makes it more intelligent to it being a giant sleepless horde thing. Let me know what you think in the comments. 
Life Cycle and Habitat Chasm fiends go through a three-part life cycle. We've only seen the second and third stages of this life cycle in the books, which are the chrysalis stage and the monstrous beast stage that I described in the first section. The first stage is shrouded in mystery, but Brandon has said that the chasm fiend life cycle is similar to the chal life cycle, which we can see detailed on this page out of Words of Radiance. Here we can see that chals start out as a larva, also known as a chal crimbling. After maturing for a time, they go through a pupation where they form a chrysalis and eventually emerge as an adult chal. I think we can ignore the last two stages of the chal life cycle shown here, where they pupate for a second time and seemingly just die. So based on that information, it's pretty likely that chasm fiends also start out as a larva during the first stage of their life cycle. We also have a word of Brandon that makes it seem like chasm fiends aren't always as aggressive as they are in their final stage. So these chasm fiend crimlings might even be kind of cute. These chasm fiend larvae are never seen in the books, and Shallan speculates that chasm fiends don't actually live on the Shattered Plains, they just migrate there to pupate. Once they are at the Shattered Plains and ready to pupate, they wait until night and then climb onto one of the plateaus where they form their chrysalis, beginning the second stage of their life cycle. These chrysalis look like massive, oblong boulders that stand around 20 feet high. Their shell is rugged and hard, made from a brown-green rock-like material. They blend in with the surroundings and are stuck to the plateau with the same substance that makes up the shell. Once the chrysalis is formed, it stays in place awaiting the next high storm. When the high storm hits, the chrysalis takes in a massive amount of investiture and the metamorphosis begins. The specifics of this transformation aren't clear, but Brandon says it involves a sprin. I'm guessing this is where they bond the mandra to allow them to grow so large during the transformation. Once the high storm is finished, the chasm fiend has officially entered its third and final form. At this stage, most chasm fiends migrate back to where they came from originally because there's barely enough food to support creatures of their size on the Shattered Plains. Occasionally, however, one of these beasts decides to stick around and set up a nest in the chasms. Despite their prodigious size, chasm fiends are able to maneuver through the chasms of the Shattered Plains very efficiently. They grip the chasm walls with their numerous legs to hold their bodies above the floor, and they can curl and twist underneath themselves to turn about in the narrow confines. Even with this impressive mobility, their jumbo carapace-covered bodies fill the chasms, brushing against the walls as they move about, scraping away moss and scoring the rock. So if you ever find yourself in a slot canyon and hear scraping noises coming your way, I advise you to run. Chasm fiends are carnivores, and in their natural habitat, they're the apex predator, hunting down herds of chawls or other shelled creatures for food, easily breaking their shells with their enormous claws to get to the flesh. On the Shattered Plains, however, life is quite a bit harsher, and the full-grown chasm fiends that stick around mostly have to resort to eating the corpses of humans, listeners, or other creatures that fall into the chasms from the plateaus above. When a chasm fiend dies, their mandra sprint float out of their body and puff away. Kremlings come out to feast on the carcass, and the vines of rock buds reach out to lap up the beast's blood. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit the like button. Chasm Fiend Hunts Even though chasm fiends are terrifyingly large and aggressive, the Alethi people enjoy organizing hunts to bring these beasts down. These hunts are led by a huntsmaster who is very experienced in luring out chasm fiends and giving pre-hunt advice to light-eyed shard bears on how to bring them down. This huntsmaster and his underling hunters are in charge of preparing two plateaus near the chasm fiend's nest, a large one for spectators to watch the hunt from afar and a smaller one for the hunt itself. They dump hog's blood down the sides of the hunting plateau and then drape hog carcasses tied to ropes over the sides of the cliff to be dragged by a lumbering chole. This is enough to lure out the chasm fiend within a few hours time. 
Once the behemoth creature has emerged from the chasms below, wild hogs are released to distract the beast while soldiers begin pelting it with volleys of arrows. Many of these arrows bounce off the chasm fiend's carapace ineffectually, but some manage to thump into the creature between the carapace plates, digging into the flesh beneath. The light-eyed shard bearers join in on this attack from afar, using grand bows. These massive bows fire thick shafted arrows that are able to punch through the rock-like carapace. If everything goes as planned, the chasm fiend will be stuck with enough arrows to begin weakening it, and if not, dozens of soldiers can be killed in a heartbeat. Once the chasm fiend has been sufficiently weakened, the shard bearers, equipped with their near invincible shard plate and their deadly shard blades, close in on the trumping monster, riding on the backs of their reshadiums. They repeatedly ride past the 14 rear legs of the chasm fiend, cutting through them one by one with their blades. This is the most intense part of the hunt, as the chasm fiend will often become enraged, ignoring the arrow sticking out of it, and begin thrashing and fighting back ferociously. Eventually, enough legs are severed and the chasm fiend topples over. One of the shard bearers then plunges their blade into the creature's thick neck, causing Violet Iker to spurt out and killing the beast instantly. The shard bearer then cuts into the chest and pulls free the prize, the enormous emerald gem heart. By this point, glory spren are typically appearing around those who took part in the hunt, and soldiers begin harvesting the meat and carapace from the dead chasm fiend. The type of hunt I just described is a rare occurrence. For much of Alethi history, chasm fiends were considered legendary, and hunting trips to the east attempting to seek the monsters out were rare. That all changed when the War of Reckoning began and the Alethi High Princes set up their war camps on the rim of the Shattered Plains. They realized that they didn't have to fight the full-grown beasts to harvest their valuable gem hearts, but could instead cut into the massive chrysalises the creatures make when they are preparing for their transformation and simply pull out the gem heart from there. This led to fierce battles between the listener natives and the Alethi to lay claim to the chrysalises for harvesting. The Alethi began depending on the chasm fiend gem hearts to power their soul casters in order to feed their armies. The number of chrysalises being harvested during this time got as high as 150 every year, leading to chasm fiends becoming endangered. Shalon has suggested that learning how to farm chasm fiends could be the solution to this problem, so maybe in future books we'll see this in practice. Videos like these are made possible by Patreon. Consider becoming a patron to support the channel and get perks such as early access to videos, patron-only updates, access to the patron-only Discord server, and more. I'll link it in the description below. That concludes this deep dive about Chasm Fiends, Roshar's deadliest predator. There's another Rosharan creature called the Taina that make Chasm Fiends seem tiny by comparison. Check out my Taina deep dive video to learn all about them.